Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Eight human skulls found in Jolani. Police in Jolani are currently investigating the discovery of eight human skulls found in the parish on Thursday. A senior police officer told reporters that the skulls were discovered in the Spring Hill community in the parish. Yes, we found eight skulls, but we haven't found anything else like skeletons and other body parts the lawmen divulge. He said the team will continue their investigation into the matter that it has shot the community. St. Mary Night Club operator charged with human trafficking. St. Mary Night Club operator has been arrested and charged following ongoing investigations into human trafficking ring in the parish. Junior Green, 45, who operates the Go Hard Night Club in Highgate, St. Mary, was charged with trafficking in persons, having no club license, and living off the earnings of prostitution. Police said Green is from Fraserwood District in the parish. No court date has been given for the accused. The authorities are alleging that between February and July of this year, Green's nightclub was used to accommodate sexual activities involving underage girls. The police raided the nightclub recently, and a female juvenile was held after being caught in sexual acts with an adult. Wholeness affirms government commitment to local government elections. Prime Minister Andrew Wholeness says the government intends to fulfill its constitutional duties concerning local government elections, signaling that voters should prepare to go ahead to the polls. The government intends to fulfill the constitutional requirements and the constitution as it relates to local government elections. They have set a date, it has been postponed. If there is need, if something happens, if there is an external shock or weather events, then it certainly they has to be considered wholly stated. Hornets made these remarks during a media briefing at the office of the Prime Minister on Thursday morning. Local government elections constitutionally scheduled every four years was held in November 2016. Initially planned for November 2020, they were postponed due to COVID-19 pandemic, despite general elections taking place two months earlier in September of that year. In February, Minister of Local Government and World Development Desmond McKenzie announced the third postponement of the elections. When the post been put off for up to February 28, 2024, Mackenzie said that the government needed more time to carry out consultation around draft legislation to establish Portmore as Jamaica's 15th parish. The bill to postpone the polls also cited the high level of monetary cost of holding the elections and building resilience to possibly future shocks as well as setting the country on a path of sustained growth. In response to the repeated postponements, Mark Gordon, president of the People's National Party, issued a warning that his party would take the ruling Jamaica Labour Party to court if the local government elections were further delayed in February 2024. Gordon expressed concerns about extending the terms, existing councillors, and the potential implications for democratic local governance. Gordon urged the government to hold the election as soon as possible and cautioned against any attempt to postpone them beyond the specified timeline emphasizing the importance of adhering to the principles of democracy. Now let me tell you, if them feel like they can come and extend it again, we are going to take them to court and we are going to test the constitutionality of that because if they try it again, they will be extending the term of the existing councils by 100% on scrupulous grounds and I am very confident that our courts will not allow that to happen because that cannot be consistent with the democratic system of local governance, he stated. So I'm warning them no bother try that again, call the local government election before the time come for the end of this one year period, which was put in of February 1 on bogus grounds, he added. He urged the government to call the elections as soon as possible. Woman fined for various offenses after confrontation with cop. A St. James one, unruly behavior at the Sanxa International Airport last month has left her $9,000 sporo. Melissa Campbell, a St. James resident, pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct, using indecent language as well as being very abusive when she appeared in the St. James Parish Court on Wednesday. According to the prosecution, Campbell was at the Arrival Terminal of the San International Airport around 7 p.m. on July 25th when she was approached by a police officer in relation to a report of malicious destruction of property against her. The allegations are that when the cop confronted her, the woman began shouting and behaving boisterously. When she was asked to desist from behaving in such a boisterous manner, Campbell allegedly resorted to explicit and sexual explicit comments. Campbell was subsequently fined $5,000 or 10 days for disorderly conduct and $2,000 or 10 days for using indecent language. 
She was also fined $2,000 or 10 days in jail for using abusive language. Eva killed by police in St. Elizabeth. The police say one of Westmoreland's most feared gunmen was shot and killed during a confrontation with the cops in Burns Savannah, Lakova in St. Elizabeth, Wednesday morning. He has been identified as Nicholas Rubin, otherwise called Evil. The police say a Berta pistol with 5.9mm cartridges were seized. Meanwhile, head of the St. Elizabeth Police, Acting Superintendent Claridge Minto, says the police are keeping a close watch on several persons who have been charged for serious offences and have given residential addresses in the parish to the courts. He says these persons are required to report to various police stations as conditions of their bail. We're keeping a close eye on persons residing in the parish who have serious matters before the court, said Minto. The matter is being investigated by the Inspectorate and Professional Standard Oversight Bureau and the Independent Commission of Investigations. Man killed, two injured after vehicle collided with cow. A man is dead and two others injured after a motor vehicle collided with a cow in Baywood, Little London, Westmoreland on Wednesday morning. The deceased has been identified as 22-year-old Christopher Samuels, otherwise called Delano, of Darling Street in Savannah Lamar in the parish. Samuels is the second person in less than 72 hours to be killed due to stray cows in that era. On Sunday, 21-year-old Constable J. A. Banks died as a result of injuries he sustained when his service motorcycle collided with a cow. Reports from the police are that about 2.20 a.m., Samuels was an occupant in the Toyota Corolla Axio motor car heading towards Savannah Lamar with another man and woman aboard. Upon reaching a section of the roadway, a car walked into the path of the vehicle causing a collision. The driver of the vehicle then lost control of the vehicle and collided with a tree. The three occupants of the vehicle sustained serious injuries and were taken to the Savannah Lamar Hospital, where Samuels was pronounced dead and the man and woman hospitalized. In responding to Samuel's death, Deputy Inspector of Police in charge of Westmoreland Division, Adrian Hamilton, told reporters that the force will have to intensify the enforcement of animal owners who leave them carelessly to roam. We have to move with some alacrity. We are going to have to identify where we can the owners of these animals and in cases where we can't, then we will have to seize them, the animals, DSP warned. However, DSP Hamilton noted that there will be challenges as there is no pond in the parish at present to house animals. DPP Paula Llewellyn on leave, Jeremy Taylor acting. Director of Public Prosecutions DPP Paula Llewellyn KC is on leave for three weeks. Senior Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions Jeremy Taylor KC will be acting in the post. It is expected that on her return to work, she will get a further extension of two years arising from the amendment last month of the Constitution of Jamaica. Llewellyn was given a three-year extension in 2020. Prior to the amendment, the age of retirement was 60 years. Now the age of retirement for the DPP and the Auditor General is 65 years. The Governor General on July 31st gave his absence to the amendment, thereby establishing it in law. The amendment has made with threats of legal challenges, oppositions and call for Llewellyn not to benefit from the revised retirement age. But three senior deputy directors in her office had lauded Llewellyn, who is the first female DPP, for her, for what they say is her outstanding performance on the job. The tributes were made last month when the St. Andrew Business and Professional Women's Club presented Llewellyn with the Mavis Watts Award for her contribution to the field of law enforcement. The award is named after the founder of the club. Jeremy Taylor described Llewellyn as sublime and superb in her craft as an advocate in the course of Jamaica law. She is in need the best lawyer in Jamaica, bar none who practices and is engaged in criminal litigations. She is a true public servant, always forcing herself and staff to ask ourselves when contemplating an action, is it in the public interest and how to prepare in Jamaica benefit. Taylor added that apart from being the larger than life itself and brilliant beyond words, she is caring, kind, strong and will always go above and beyond for her friends, family and her country in order to do what is right. In lauding her, Claudia Thomason said, We cannot really capture in words how instrumental you have been to the public engagement and sensitization where the work we do is concerned. You have been as fierce as you have been gentle, steadfast in your commitment to the public, whom we serve while protecting their interests. Sharon Millwood Moore thanked Llewellyn for sharing her knowledge and experience in helping to mold me as I have sought further to build my skills as an advocate and a leader. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.